Well, thank the Lord. God's so good to us, and I'm so thankful for His many blessings, His goodness, and His mercy. All of these needs that's been made known and requested, I do want us to lift those up in prayer. Um, think about if it was you. I mean, wouldn't you want to be prayed for if you were having to go have some kind of neck surgery or if you were having problems, you know, health issues, wouldn't you want to be prayed for? Amen. If you were the one who lost your wallet with $25 in it and all of your uh, information in it, wouldn't you want somebody to pray that that would be found safe and sound and nothing would be taken out of it? Amen. I know I would because there's not a whole lot of money in my bank account, but there's a whole lot of good credit behind my name and so I sure wouldn't want them to <laughs> to take everything and then go blow my credit way out of proportion but anyhow it's just good to be in the Lord's house I'm looking forward to what God's going to do I want to talk to us tonight on this thought you have a choice you have a choice now that choice can be one of two things you can choose good over evil you can choose freedom over bondage but but even more, you have a choice. You know, I sung that song, We're Free to Worship. The, the, the thing that I want to bring out is not that you are free to worship. That is a given. If you're saved and you've been born again, you are free to worship. But the, 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 the problem lies within this. Do we choose to worship? Do we choose to live for God? I mean, God paid the debt. He, he, he sent His Son to die on the cross, and He gave Himself for a, a, a ransom and a sacrifice, all for this, so that you could have a choice. Amen. Book of Joshua, chapter number 24, if you have your Bibles. Also, book of Galatians, chapter number 5. Joshua 24, and verse 15, and Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 13. I'm going to look at two texts of Scripture. I'm sure you probably heard part of this quoted before in the book of Joshua, but I want to talk to us about that choice that we have. Amen. Joshua chapter number 24, going to begin in verse number 15. If you have it, would you say amen? And thank you for standing for the reading of God's Word. The Bible says in Joshua chapter number 24, verse number 15, And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 13 reads like this, for brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion unto the flesh, but by love serve one another. The line has been established here. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. May the Lord add a re, uh, the blessing to the reading of His Word. The line has been established here in Scripture by the Galatians chapter number 5 and verse number 13. Brethren, you have been set at liberty. You've been given that freedom. You've been given the ability to do whatsoever you will. Just think about it. Amen. As Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sin and he, he gave himself for us and he gave himself, amen, that we could live free, that we could have that choice. Amen. We've been given that liberty and the liberty is the choice. Amen. Let me take you through a timeline if I can. We see that Jesus has died on the cross and we see that before he dies on the cross there is this thing called the law. It has been established and the law declares unto you what you may and what you may not do. The law declares unto you what you must do in order to have your sins pardoned. And the law declares unto you how you must go about bringing that sacrifice unto the Lord. But fast forward into the New Testament, we have the life of Christ and then we have Christ's death. Did you know the first person ever afforded that choice in their life? was the thief that was on the cross next to Jesus whenever he said to the other thief who had mocked him and he said, if you call yourself the Son of God, then take us all down from here. And he said, what are you doing? You're a fool. You're crazy. He said, just would you do one thing for me? When you enter into your kingdom today, would you remember me? And he said, you will today be with me in paradise. Boy, that's a story. And that's, that's a, that is an accomplishment. That is something, I mean, to tell you, it would be a 
amazing. That would be a privilege to be the first person to see paradise whenever Christ Jesus gave up the ghost and died. Amen. And so we see that this, this thief had a choice before the death of Christ. Now understand something. Before the death of Christ, even up to the last second, before he drew his last breath, there was no choice. It was all according to the law. You did not choose to serve God. Amen. You would either live according to the law or you didn't. Amen. And so we look here and we see that all of a sudden, what am I saying? You were under that law, but now that Jesus Christ has died and the breath has gone out of his body and the blood has been poured out, we now have a choice, amen. It's our decision whether we want to walk in liberty or not. Before Christ, amen, sin was everywhere. It still is everywhere, except out of those, amen, who have been saved and washed in the blood. We no longer possess sin. We do you no longer carry sin. Amen. We believe that the blood of Jesus washes that sin away and completely separates us away from that sin. It separates us away from sin and separates us unto God. Amen. And so we find now that there is this choice that you have. You can live free from sin. You can live away from sin. But but in the Old Testament it wasn't so. That sin was everywhere and we can look at the power of the blood and we can see that the blood of lambs and rams and doves and all of this would never be able to atone the way the blood of Jesus could atone. The lambs and the rams and the doves all they could do was pacify the anger of God. All they could do was pacify the wrath of God that was going to come on the people because of their sin. It it never changed the person. It never made their nature change. And even Abraham and Moses still lived in sin. And they had to go and they had to create that sacrifice unto God make that sacrifice unto God and and even so on the inside they were still sinful men now some of you don't believe that about Abraham but something I read the other day suggests something different the Bible says whenever he was talking to Abraham he said get up and leave your kin leave them but who did he take with him whenever he left his nephew his kin. God told him, get up, leave leave the land of your fathers, leave all of your kindred behind, and yet he takes a man by the name of Lot who was his cousin. And so, again, sin is still in this man. That will to be comfortable rather than step out on faith is still in this man. That will, that self-will, it's still there, it's still prevalent. Now don't think for one moment whenever Abraham went out and Lot was with him and he he told him, you know, they had been having a, a conflict between their herdsmen and he said, well, if you choose to go this way, I'll go this way. And if you chose to go that way, then I'll go that way. Amen. Don't think for a moment whenever he looked at the lush green that he was hoping Lot would choose something else. Hello? That man nature was still in Abraham even though God used him. Even though God did, listen, amen, we see, we're thankful for the the example that was Abraham whenever he took his son up on the top of that mountain and he was going to sacrifice him before his God, amen. But even so, we still see, amen, that there are times in the scripture whenever he falls back to that old man because the blood of lambs and rams could never change a man. It could never set them at liberty. It could never set them free. But fast forward into the New Testament, we have a choice that we can live in that freedom God has already set us free God already paid the price and it's just up to us to live that life it's up to us to live in that price it's up to us to abide under the shadow of the almighty it's up to us to live under that blood flow where the devil can't touch us where our old nature can't rise back up where we take that old nature and we crucify it daily because we have a choice we don't have to be the old man that we once were how many of you would like to go back to your old life amen you'd like to go back to living the way you were living amen I won't say that as a Christian it's never crossed my mind but I have a choice I can put that back under the blood and I can say I have no desire to go back there whenever it comes back up in my mind we have a choice amen that Jesus Christ bled and died to empower us hallelujah 
hallelujah, as Christians, as people of God, we are empowered to live a life of liberty and live a life of freedom. And the world says you're bound because you've got to go to church every week. You're bound because you've got to dress a certain way. You're bound because you can't partake of this and you can't partake of that. And every time they tell me I'm bound, I just want to look at them and say, no, you don't really understand. I'm not bound by anything. I don't partake of that because I don't want to. I don't partake of that because I don't like the way it makes me feel. (laughs) Amen. Don't you think for a second that God's not gentleman enough to let you walk right back out in there? Amen. He's gentleman enough. He'll let you walk out the door and leave him sitting there high and dry and watch you just walk away. But we have a choice. Amen. We can decide I'm not leaving you, God. And even though I mess up, I'm still going to come back home. I know this is a bad illustration, but I want to use it anyhow. It'd be just like a woman or a man leaving home and going out and committing adultery and turning around and walking right back in the house and saying, I'm sorry, I want to try to do better. Now, the way that I just said that, you're looking at me like, huh, they'd be put out of the house. Amen. But when they came back with a sincere heart and they said, listen, I am sincerely apologetic for what I've done and I really want to try to make this right. I want to try to make this happen. Boy, it's a lot easier said than done, isn't it? Amen. But you have a choice. We have a choice. If, because see what happens is whenever a sinner comes into the house of God and they get saved, they get born again and they get married to God. Right? And then they go out there and they start committing sin. That's adultery on God. Look at it like that. That's adultery on God. We said, God, we're going to shun that lifestyle. We're going to shun Satan essentially we're going to shun Satan and we're going to marry you and we're going to love you and we're going to cherish you and we're going to walk with you and talk with you and care about you but when we go back out and we commit sin we're playing the harlot Come on, we're playing the harlot with the devil but if you come back in the house of God now I don't want you to think when I'm saying house of God I don't think I'm talking about a church I'm talking about the home of God Amen, where he's dwelling, where he's living at. We come back in, amen, and we say, God, I am sincerely sorry for playing with sin. I'm sincerely sorry for going out a whoring after the devil, amen, but I want to come back in and I want, you to te- I want you to show me, amen, I want you to show me some love and affection and be compassionate towards me. And I'm so thankful the Bible said that he is long-suffering to us, Lord, amen, because he remembers our flesh, our frame, and that we are but flesh just as he did Israel, amen, but the only difference is Israel didn't have a choice. They were going to commit sin no matter what. No matter what. Because there was not enough blood or enough power in the blood of the lambs and rams to change that inward man. Boy, we ought to be real happy tonight that the inside has been changed. It's been rearranged. It's been dealt with. The sin is gone. Amen. There's a hymnal in that in that church hymnal right there, and it's called My Sins Are Gone. Amen. Aren't you glad they've been washed away? Aren't you glad they're under the blood? Aren't you glad that you don't have to worry about them? Listen, if you used to deal with a lying tongue, you don't have to get up in the morning and worry about a lying tongue coming out your mouth. Amen. Because your sins are gone. They're washed away. You can get up. And those thoughts may come to your mind. Absolutely. The devil knows how to fight us. The devil knows how to try to uh, 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 conceive evil in our hearts again. Amen. But again, you have a choice. You can put up that wall and you can say, no, devil. Amen. There, I was preaching a revival over at Lake Butler Church of God. And one of the people there, he's the youth minister now. Amen. He was up there and he was testifying. And he would testify just about every other night. And man, I'm telling you, there was some power in them testimonies, wasn't there, honey? Amen. And he'd get up and testify just about every other night. But he got up and testified this night. And he said, hallelujah to the Lamb. Uh, he said, I, I'm, I'm ashamed of what I used to be. I'm ashamed of what I used to do. Amen. And the devil comes back to me. And he tries to bring this back on me. He said, not today, devil. Not today. Amen. Uh, he said, not today and not ever, devil. And I'm telling you, man, that just that just grew on my heart. Amen. Uh, anytime 
the devil comes against you, listen. In the Old Testament, Israel had no choice. When the devil came, he was going to wreak havoc because they did not possess a holy power on the inside. But you as a child of God, you possess a holy power on the inside. When the devil comes against you, you don't have to just let him have his will and his way. You don't have to let him wreak havoc in your life. Amen. You can just simply look him straight in the eyes and you can say, not today, devil. Try again tomorrow. When he comes back tomorrow, you can say not today devil not this week not this month not this year and not ever on your life amen because you're already defeated and let me just go on over to book of revelations and let me remind you what your destination is amen I've got a choice and I choose to stand I've got a choice and I choose to serve God no matter what the schoolhouse says no matter what the devil says no matter what mom and daddy says I heard a preacher one time say this he said that if your granny tells you you don't have to live a good sanctified life she's being used as a tool of the devil I thought my God you called a man's woman a grandma the, 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 the man's grandma a devil amen but even so if that's the case you can tell the devil I choose to stand no matter what granny says amen if they say that you can do this and I can go here and I can take a little sip of that I can take a little pop of that amen I'm telling you you can tell the devil not today not ever not on your life let me go again like I said sometimes it's just good to go to book of revelation and just Show the devil where he's going. Amen. I've done that several times. I just flip right on over there to the back of the book and I say, devil, let me read you something. Let me show you where you're going. Let me show you what your end is. Amen. I know his will and his desire, Sister Donna Kay, is to take as many people as he can with him. But I'm here to declare to the devil and serve notice on him. You can try, but you won't get this one. Amen. I'm covered by the blood and I have a decision I can make I have the power by the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross if it was just me by myself the devil would come against me and I would have to give give way to his desires I'd have to give way to his will but because one day on an old rugged cross there was a man who died amen listen he didn't just die to save you from your sin he he died to give you power over the enemy amen how's he going to save you from your sin if he cannot make you victorious over the one who presents the sin against you oh I love it on the day of judgment when I stand before Christ I can hear the devil screaming in my ear you were a liar you were a cusser you were a porn addict amen and I can just look at him and I can say would you be quiet for just a moment and let me call back to remembrance tonight that the blood of Jesus was poured on my soul soul and it was all washed away I can imagine sister standing before Jesus Christ and the devil's hollering all these accusations and Jesus said would you shut up all I see is what my son oh my God all I see is the blood that was shed on Calvary I got a little excited I don't think Jesus is going to say shut up amen but I do believe he'll look at the devil and say, would you hush a minute? You're crying out all these accusations of a liar. Amen. You want to get real deep? Let's get real deep. I've only told a certain amount of people this. I was a porn addict. I was. Amen. You know what comes along with that? Spirit of lust. Fornication. Come on. The Bible said if you look on a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Amen. So fornication, adultery, lust. What comes with a lying spirit? Well, you got lying. Amen. You got all these different things. Amen. What comes behind cussing? That's filth, disgust. Amen. Filthy lucre. Amen. Nasty. Um, come on now. Corrupt communication. All these things the Bible talks against. So if the devil really wanted to get detailed, he could spit out a lot of stuff. But I can still see Jesus saying, hush just a minute. You're crying out lust. You're crying out fornication. You're crying out dirty communication. You're crying out lying. Amen. But all I see is an innocent soul that's been washed by the blood. Oh, hallelujah. 
All I see is a soul who chose, who chose me. Amen. Oh, yeah, there was a part of their life back then, but I can't even, my God, help me, Jesus. Anybody reading your Bible where he buries those sins and don't mark the grave? Anybody read in your Bible where he cast them into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again? Amen. He'll look at me and he'll say, well, I, I see some part of his life back here, but there ain't nothing wrote there because it was all cast into the sea of forgetfulness. Only thing I see is the new birth, and from there on, amen. Now, assume we have a hard time sometimes getting over those things amen that we used to do and that thing that we used to be amen but hallelujah to the Lamb of God I would to God somebody would just drive a stake in the ground and say I'm not going back where I used to be I'm not going to think about who I was amen but I'm just going to press on because whenever I got born again God drew a line in the sand and he said this part of their life don't matter no more amen I've done what I needed to do to try them in that time and now I've drawn them to an altar now they've gotten saved and from this point on this is all I'm going to see you can choose oh well the stuff from my past is just too big it's just too heavy I can't I can't forget about all that you can choose you can choose you can say that part of my life's not real important I wasn't even really happy in that part of my life. Hello. Amen. I wasn't even really satisfied with that part of my life. My mama, boy, my mama knows what it's like to be in church. She knows what it's like to be saved. But she's not at this time, sadly, regrettably. But anyhow, she, she tells me, listen, my mom had a messed up childhood. Her first daddy died whenever, or her real dad died whenever she was four months old four, six, or eight months old, can't remember, somewhere around in there, amen. Her first daddy died before she ever knew him, to put it that way. And then her second daddy, who would have been her stepdad, he come into her life whenever she was about, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five. And so he came into her life then, died when she was 11. So she's been through two dads, one she didn't even know, then that one, and she watched that man die. She watched him die in her house on that bed. Watched him take his last breath. And then all these other different things, but that time would fail me to tell everything. But needless to say, she's had a messed up young child life. Amen. I'm telling you, whenever she was, uh, whenever that her second dad died, uh, he had been married before, had a daughter and a son, I believe, uh, with another woman. Well, anyhow, whenever he died, they went and they the the children went to that house, took everything that my mom, my grandma, and my other uh, my aunt owned, and put it all out in the road and said, "You got to be out of here. I'm sorry, this house don't belong to you." Then her mom left and went and stayed with her sister, and then my aunt and my mom were left to themselves. 11, 13, somewhere around in that age, left to themselves. I can talk. Uh, are we live streaming? Okay, well, she probably won't listen to it anyhow. Praise God. I talked to my mom. She tried marijuana at a young age. She was sleeping in the back of a pickup truck with a guy that she was calling her boyfriend at the time under the stars cold, hot, rain, whatever sleeping in the back of a pickup truck didn't have no place to go amen and I ask her sometimes about her childhood because during that time of her second dad living in her life she was in church, her, her mom was in church her mom was a good old time wholeness woman matter of fact, I may have told this here before I probably have, but she had a skirt that was her favorite skirt and it had holes in the knees from how much she spent time in prayer and so during that part of her life, it's a good part. It's a good time, amen. And I keep asking her about it. I ask her about it. I ask her about it. And she said, son, I don't know. I try to block those things out of my life. I try to block those things out of my memory. Why would you say all that, Brother Griston? Because I just said a minute ago, if you remember, I was going somewhere with that. If you remember, I said, oh, my past is too big for me to be able to just forget about it. Well, my mom's tried to. She's pretty much well succeeded. Most of that she doesn't she doesn't remember. She's got um, autopsy papers on her real dad, on her biological father. My grandma told him, you can do anything you want to to him, just don't touch his brain. I 
I can't show you that in writing. Amen. All these different things, but, but you have a choice. You have a choice. You can block out that part of your life, that part that didn't matter, just like Christ has. And He's empowered you to make that choice whether you want to serve Him or whether you don't. Another place in Scripture, didn't have time to look it up, but the Bible says, This day I set before you a blessing and a cursing. Choose you this day whom you will serve. You have a choice. The decision is yours to make. Why? Because Christ empowered you on the cross. Sometimes we don't really understand the full scope, and I don't claim to. I don't want you to think that I'm trying to say I know everything there is to know, but sometimes we don't understand the full scope of what the cross really does. Amen. Oh, yeah, the cross, it, well, his blood saved us from our sin. That's wonderful. Yeah, it is wonderful. What else did it do? The cross bridged the gap between us and Christ and God. Amen. Jesus bridged the, crap, the, the, the gap first. Excuse me. He bridged the gap first, but then after that, the blood bridged the gap between us and God. The blood, amen, the cross bridged that gap. <clears throat> the cross has empowered us not to bring up any bad memories or anything like that, but I'm sure you probably heard of the story of the exorcism. I'm sure you probably know what I'm talking about. Whether I believe Catholicism is right or wrong, what do they use whenever they begin to cast out that cross has empowered us to do more things than we can even comprehend <laughs> another thing the cross did was empower us to live free from sin I know you probably all know this you probably all understand it and it's nothing new for you but sometimes it's just good to be reminded Amen. But, and sometimes it's good to feel this way that you are empowered by Christ Jesus to make decisions the kingdom you are in your own life you can decide whether I'm going to serve God or I'm not I don't mean to get too political but in the assemblies of God there is a doctrine and their doctrine is almost identical to the church of God with the exception of about one thing and that is instantaneous sanctification and progressive sanctification Church of God believes that uh, according to, to the, the doctrine, there is an instantaneous sanctification, which means you pray and at one time you become sanctified. While the assemblies of God believe that there is a progressive sanctification, as in you may you know, get sanctified from this one thing first and then sanctified from another thing later and another thing later and another thing later. Personally, if you ask me, I agree with the assembly of God and the church of God. Simply for this fact, I believe that God is God and He can do whatever He wants to. And if He wants to instantaneously and completely sanctify me right at this very moment, He can do so. But also, more, happen, more often than not, I've seen it like this, that God does progressively sanctify people. He does progressively clean people's life up. Personally, again, I, I agree with both both statements. Once, once again, God is God. He can do whatever He desires. If He wants to instantaneously sanctify me, He may. I'm not going to hold his hand back. But then again, if he wants to progressively sanctify me, he, sanctify me, he may also do that. But the point I'm trying to make here with this progressive sanctification versus instantaneous sanctification is this. A progressive sanctification tells you that you have to get up every morning and declare you're going to serve God today. If it were completely and entirely instantaneous, then the day that you were sanctified you would no longer really have to decide if you wanted to serve God or not because you'd be instantaneously sanctified all those thoughts would be gone all those desires sanctification means to be like a saint amen aside from all that doctrine again I want to go back to progressive sanctification that's you getting up every day and you're saying okay now you don't literally say it out loud you don't really think it every day amen but you get up and you say okay today's a new day and I'm going to serve God today are empowered to make that decision. Did you
did you know you can't get saved unless the Spirit of the Lord draws you? Well, you all the Bible's bonkers to me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Amen. But you cannot get saved unless the Spirit of God draws you. So, think of it like this. The Spirit of God has drawn you. The Bible said, Blessed is the man whom the Lord choose, calleth and choose, or chooseth, chooseth and calleth to approach unto his throne. The Bible says that. Ask me later. I'm not real good about where it's at. <laughs> I'm good about it. it says it, but not where it's at. Amen. The Bible says, Blessed is the man whom the Lord call, chooseth and calleth to approach unto and causeth to approach unto his throne. Again, you can't get saved unless the Spirit of the Lord draws you. But think about this. You've been drawn by the Spirit. You've been caused to come and approach unto the throne, and you've been saved. So when you wake up in the morning, you have the decision to make, I'm going to serve God or I'm going to serve the devil. What about all these people passing by up and down on this highway tonight that aren't saved? When they get up in the morning, they're not going to have a choice. Not unless the Spirit of the Lord draws them. The only choice they have is I'm going to serve the devil today. That's all they get. They don't get a choice. Unless the Spirit of God comes by their way, He can do it. He's God again. Unless the Spirit of God comes by their way and draws them in their bedroom or draws them in their kitchen or draws them in their bathroom or wherever they may be. But sometimes in the back of a truck on the next morning after you've slept all night in the cold. Wherever it is. If the Spirit of the Lord draws them, then they can make a decision that day. How many of you actually think the majority of people now I'm not saying God can't but how many of you think in the morning the majority of the people are going to get drawn by God not very many because they don't know they haven't read the Bible maybe they've got a mama who's praying for them but mama's discouraged she doesn't think it's going to be any good let's put all this aside when those wake up in the morning, they're going to have one choice. Serve the devil. Serve sin. Serve self. And if they should fall their head back on their pillow that night, and the Spirit of the Lord doesn't draw them, the next morning, they're going to get up, they're going to have to serve the devil. Who's really bound here? I choose to serve him because I love him. Amen. And because you're empowered, some of y'all may, may not feel this way, but to me, whenever I'm empowered to make a decision, it makes me feel good. You ever been there? It's all right to raise your hand. <laughs> when you wake up and you say, okay, I have a choice whether I'm going to go to work or not have a choice whether I'm going to well bless God I don't feel like cooking this morning so I'm going to have a bowl of cereal don't you feel empowered <laughs> or I don't want no cardboard cereal cardboard biscuits and milk I'm going to have me an egg and bacon and ham and toast and grits and a biscuit I hope I can inspire you sister I don't want no cardboard bits. I want some meat. Guess what? You have that choice. And even more, if all of those things are not in your house at this very moment, you're going to probably pass by some kind of grocery store. If you're going to Middleburg, <laughs> if you go to Lodi, you're going to pass by a Dollar General. go back to Keystone, I don't know what's that way. I ain't never drove that way. Not much. Amen. But you, just put it this way. At any length of whoever goes home away from a grocery store, if you drive a little bit further, you can probably go to one. Even Dollar General sells bacon. <laughs> and milk. <laughs> She's going to eat cereal in the morning. She's bound and determined. <laughs> But you have the decision. You have the, you have the power to make that choice. Amen. 
I don't have very good willpower. Don't ask my wife. But this morning on my way to work, I stopped at the gas station because I drunk the rest of my Yoo-Hoo that she bought me yesterday and I needed some more chocolate in the fridge before I went to work. So I stopped and they had this nice little deli thing sitting in the gas station. I thought, man, I never noticed that before. So I decided I'd go over there and I'd look. I walked out of there with a hash brown and a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit and a chocolate milk. <laughs> but I am empowered to make that decision because I make the money. <laughs> I'll just stop at the gas station, brother. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But do you understand what I'm saying? We have the power to make that decision. Listen, it would just it would be just as if I was a sinner. And let's just put this in, in reality terms, like this morning, okay? Because I'm saved, amen, I have, my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and I stand amazed when I behold the place he fills. That's a song, amen? So I'm wealthy in the spirit, and I have the power to go and get whatever I need. So let's just, again, let's apply this to reality. It's as if I'm working my job and I'm making money so that I can have, so I can be empowered to receive whatsoever I desire as long as I can afford it. But if you're in sin, it would be as if you don't have a job or let me put it like this, you don't have those resources and so you can go to the store and you can walk in, but all you can do is look. Because you're unable to make that decision because the resources are not standing behind you. That's another message all in and of itself. But I will say this, the cross is our source of strength. The cross is our source, our resource. And that's what we pull from every day so that we can live for Him. If you're not pulling out of that so that you can live for Him, then you're probably not really living for him. The blood of Jesus is enough, and it empowers us to make that decision. I want to close with the scripture in Galatians. I want to read it, and then I'm going to quit. Amen. He said in Galatians 5 and 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. He drew you into that freedom. He caused you to come into that freedom. How many is glad they're saved? I am glad that I am washed in the blood because I am empowered. Oh, I forgot one thing. My mom, she, she'll get on to me later. When I was a younger person, I used to drink on New Year's Eve. I've been through a lot. Amen. I told her that about a year ago and she about had a conniption on me. I'm thinking, Mom, this was before the blood. This was before Jesus. Where was your dad? I didn't have the boldness to tell her he, tell her he was right there. Amen. You've been called unto liberty. I don't have to go and drink on New Year's Eve again. In fact, I'd rather spend it in church. Anybody ever done that? Had a watch night service? Amen. It's hard for those that have to get up early and go to work sometimes, but amen. Thank God New Year's Day is a holiday. But we've been called unto liberty. We've been called to freedom. We've been called to make that decision every single day. If I can leave you with anything, I just want to leave you with this. I want to reinforce this. You have the choice get up in the morning tell the devil I'm going to serve God today I'm going to serve God tomorrow and if you should come back in a week I'm still going to be serving God because he gave me that choice it's a wonderful thing whenever you can withstand the temptation of the devil not again <laughs> I know I've probably been all over the place in that, but not to reinforce Hollywood or anything like that, but anybody seen the movie War Room? 
One of my favorite parts is at the end when that lady stands up at that kitchen counter and she says, Devil, you just got your butt kicked. Amen. When you make that decision tomorrow, kick him. <laughs> kick him. Why? Because you can. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Amen. Why wouldn't you want to? Ain't he caused you enough grief? Ain't he caused you enough heartache? Boy, if it was me, sometimes I just want to kick him. <laughs> had a pastor one time. I promise I'm close. I'm quitting. I promise. I done toned down. I'm not even in my preaching voice no more. <laughs> I told you I'd teach it slash preach it. Probably get excited a little bit. Amen. I had a pastor one time. He said, I'm sick and tired of people bringing the devil to church. He said, I don't care the way you come to our, uh, the church I was attending at the time. You come down a dirt road beside the church, at least from our house. And there's a, our cemetery was behind the church, but it was on that dirt road. You could access it from the dirt road. And he said, I don't care if you've got to stop out there on the dirt road by the cemetery and kick him out. Tell him, go roam the graves. But kick him out. If you've got to stop your car, open up your doors, and literally kick him out. Oh, people think I'm weird. People think I'm crazy. You want to bring the devil to church? Some folks do. They bring them every week with their attitudes. That's a message for another time. Anyhow, amen. You have the power to kick the devil out. You have the power to live right. And it's not because of anything that you've done. It's only because of the cross. Amen. If anybody wants to come and pray at the altar, I will play softly. If not, we can stand and close in prayer. If y'all would rather do that, whatever you want to do. Amen. Y'all just let me know. Give me a head shake or a head nod or whatever. I want to come and pray at the altar. Y'all want to stand and just close? Okay, somebody said, yeah, y'all come and pray at the altar. I'm going to play. <laughs>